Okay. All right, hello everyone, and welcome to yet another week week rather of Theory Crafting Thursday, Theory Craft Thursday, whatever. Um, this is Arsinity, and my co-host here is Proud. What's up, That's Proud? correct. Good job. Yes, yep. hello. It's taken a few weeks, but I've gotten all my data right and all my co-hosts right. All right, so uh, I mean, how's your week in Dota been? Uh, it's been okay. My uh, my. Collegiate Star League matches didn't go quite the way I was hoping, unfortunately, but uh, we'll bounce back. We can still get in the playoffs. Everything's okay. Oh, okay. Um, Lone Druid's still Lone Druid. Alchemist is still an MMR machine, so trying not to play him quite as much, but sometimes you just got to do it. Yeah, Alchemist, uh, he's something, all right. Yeah, that hero, I don't know. He works when he works, and when he doesn't, he still kind of does. That's like my experience with Alchemist in pubs. Um, either he dominates or he at least does pretty well. Um, but yeah, so and I mean, my week in Dota has consisted of support Kunkka, and now my week in Dota will consist of Fallout stopping me from playing Dota. So we'll see how that goes. And Sounds of course, rough. yeah, it's it's a rough life, I know. Uh, but somebody's got to do it. Uh, so on that note, we will actually have a Fallout podcast likely next week, I believe, uh, with me and some of the other hosts uh, for. You know, because I mean that's the game. Anyway, not yes. to uh, n- that w- will not to conflict with uh, the Theorycraft Thursday. Oh no, no, we definitely will have all the regular shows. We just yeah. have an additional Fallout episode. Rest assured, Dota is not dead. All right. Well, fortunately, this is not the Fallout episode. This is Theorycrafting Thursday, and so this week we will be doing a combo as always, um, or as so far always, um, and we will be running not for long. <laughs> yeah, not for long. That's that's your spoiler for future weeks of theory crafting not related to a combo but Some this week foreshadowing coming out right now yeah yep uh we are doing legion commander witch doctor and um this is a combo that we think is interesting and it's not not a combo we see often right i don't think i've ever seen it actually have you and not even once has this ever been done in the history of dota i think is kind of the way i'm looking at it right now perfect i uh i wish i'd not set you up for that but apparently i did yeah, I mean, Legion Commander generally you see in solo lanes or you see her in the jungle. That's very popular right now. Um, yeah, as you, get to, as you get down, you see, at the lower ratings, you see Legion Commander more and more in the jungle. Um, but uh, it's actually not super, super successful percentage-wise. And then there's really, like, I don't know, like Legion Commander, she's such a strong hero, I think. Mm-hmm. But she's kind of like Necro, where, like, she's good. It's just, like, where the fuck does she go? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the classic... I mean, Necrophos is the good example of that. Is It's the classic problem of, like, this hero is good. If you just look at, like, the hero in their toolkit, you're like, all right, this is a good hero. But, like, they just don't go anywhere. Like, they have trouble in mid in a lot of matchups because she's melee, and she doesn't have a clear escape. And then she has trouble in the offlane because she gets zoned um, if they have, like, a decent zoner. And if you safe lane her, you don't get the safe lane... You don't get as much as you would out of her as you would get from like a quote unquote real carry. So yeah, um, she's not she's not going to dominate a game with like a little bit of an advantage unless she has someone else to fall back on. Yeah, or if you know if you just get really, I I say on one level you get really lucky, on another level you play really well, and if you get like two hundred dual damage at twenty minutes, like that's you know then she can carry it's like. The game is going so well, then you probably could have played anything, and it would have got to that point. That's very true. That's very true. I know. On the other hand, I have lost plenty of games because I play a lot of Legion. Um, I've lost plenty of games where I have like 250 dual damage because, at the end of the day, she is a single target hero, with the exception of overwhelming odds doing AOE damage, of course. Um, but I mean, there's only so much you can do when you're a melee hero that has single target damage and um, gets kited. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's a little weird. She definitely she's not super good at you know she can't really solo carry a game. She doesn't match up super well mid against a lot of heroes. Like she's okay mid, but uh, there's, there's a lot of heroes that could do just as well as she does. So she's not especially powerful. There's no situation where you'd be like, oh, you you know what would make this lane great? There's a Legion Commander in it. Um, yeah. So she's kind of in a weird space that dual off lane seems to uh, seems to really like kind of flourish. Yeah, I mean, I know my. My um, my Legion Commander pick is generally... I pick her as a counter pick. I don't just pick her like randomly because I decide I want to play Legion. It's more like, oh, well, they picked Ember Spirit or they picked like a Blink hero that I really need to lock down, like a Quop 
or a legion, oh, a legion, Jesus, I'm like going crazy, um, or a AM, for instance. And those are the heroes you can really dominate because, of course, if they rely on escapes, like an Ember Spirit is probably the best example. I think Legion is easily one of the best counters to him. Um, you just jump on top of him, and I mean, who cares if you have remnants if you can't use them, right? And then, then she's also yeah, that's that's what her dual counters, and then her uh, overwhelming odds, her Q or big AOE nuke counters, you know, illusions and guys who have a lot of spawns like uh, Brood Mother, obviously oh, speeds yeah. the shit out of all those goddamn spiders, and then you get like a blink dagger in one second if you get a good overwhelming odds out on a pile of spiders, um, and then if you have multiple guys hitting you, you're gonna get more. Uh, what is it? Not, it's not press the attack. It's uh, moment so, of courage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get more moment of courage. The more things are hitting you. So there, there's all of her moves have something that they can counter. Really. Yeah. And if, even the purge too. Like if you're against you know like uh, something that you really want to dispel like a uh, Marana arrow. Someone gets hit by a five second Marana arrow. Mm-hmm. Turns out they didn't. You press W. You win. GG. Good job. Yep. Another reason why Abaddon is obsolete. You could just pick Legion. Um, yeah. I, actually, I mean, just this last minute of conversation makes me think that she'd be well suited to being a like solo safe lane if you're running an aggro try because she's pretty like self-reliant and she matches up well against a lot of off laners so maybe that has potential although obviously that's not yeah something we would run but maybe a solo safe lane like specifically against a brood mother but not to get too much into drafting but when, mm-hmm. when i think of solo safe laners normally you want to you want to put yourself in a position where you just pick someone who beats out almost every viable off laner uh-huh. like um you know like i i like lone druid solo safe lane a lot because like lone druid will not lose a, or will lone druid will all will almost always win a 1v1 lane that's kind of changed a lot these days mm-hmm. but uh, it used to be anyways when i was playing a lot of lone druid solo safe drafting yeah, um, like he he beats a clockwork, he beats Darkseer, you know the whole nine yards. But uh, fucking Legion Commander, like she's not gonna lose, but she's not gonna win. Clock, yeah, if clock presses Q and walks up to you, you're actually probably not gonna win that exchange. That's true. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I suppose that's a very different way of thinking. Yeah, I guess that makes more sense um, to think that like you want to win that one v one because most offlaners are well suited to fighting against multiple people. And less suited against fighting against a single person. Although I think Clockwork yeah. would probably be the exception, just because he's he excels at, one, at like killing one person. Whereas a lot of the offlaners that come to mind are more suited to like fighting off multiple people, like your well, centaurs I, or your brood mothers or your um, you know, five know brood, specifically uh, Legion Commander can definitely fight off brood. But like oh, I yeah. can't really think of anyone, uh, it, any like individual heroes besides brood or axe that can really say anything to like a, or sorry, besides um, Legion or, or axe or like maybe Bristleback who can really say anything to a brood mother. Yeah, um, well, and then like Darkseer if you're melee, it's real rough. They're, they're, like the the spread of offleaners right now are pretty they're pretty fucking pretty powerful. Yeah, like good one v oneers. Yeah, it's not fun to be a melee hero in most of those lanes, especially Darkseer. Anybody yeah. who's played against that knows knows the pain, knows the pain of the little purple bubbles. But uh, fortunately, we will not be solo safe landing in any of these matchups. Um, like we said, we're gonna run Witch Doctor as as his uh, pairing, whether it's safe lane or off lane, likely off lane. Um, and I mean, Witch Doctor is a pretty simple hero. He's, I mean, I think he's one of the more consistently good heroes because, like, I mean. I shouldn't say consistent and then immediately go to cask, which is random. But, um, I mean, Witch Doctor is not rocket science, right? He is strong because he has a lot of lane presence because of the heal. He's really good in early fights um, and mid fights and late fights because cask, if you get good bounces on a cask, it's a ridiculous stun. Um, especially like those like level one rune fights, you get, what is it? It's three bounces at level one, maybe four. I think, I think it's three. Yeah, I think it's three, which is not great. But at the same time, you can lock down two people at once and get that rune. And uh, so, I mean, Witch Doctor offers, offers a lot. Maledict, of course, is one of, in my opinion, one of the most underrated abilities in Dota. Uh, trying to think of another one that's more underrated. Maybe, like, Gyro Rocket. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Maledict, it's, to be fair, it's absolute garbage. At, like, level one and even level two, pretty terrible. But as the game continues, it's it scales really well with how damage ramps up in the late game. Um, of course, I mean, BKB is pretty rough. And then, you know, we all know Death Ward, the classic spell. Although it used to be owned by Ricky, 
fun fact. But uh, but yeah, I mean, so what's the exact synergy here that we think between Legion Commander paired with Witch Doctor? I mean, the first one that comes to mind is in the like once we're both six, you're gonna have dual. Then I can uh, Death Ward, and that's a lot of damage. But I mean, Maledict doesn't synergize particularly well. Um, well, if if you ma- if you Maledict and then get a duel off, that, I mean, like you know, that's that's a lot of a lot of preparation. But uh, Maledict in a duel, not the worst thing ever. Is something you can add on there. Uh, they'd probably at least die after the duel. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Maledict takes some time to ramp up, so that's not the best. Um, Paralyzing Cask, I think one of the uh, one of the best things about it, uh, outside of like t- talking outside of laning phase, even then. Uh, Cask has a really, really long range, actually. It's a pretty good initiation spell when you're dealing with small skirmishes. Um, so Legion has some issues closing the gap, so if you you know use Q on your Legion, gives you some extra move speed, and a Cask goes out, that should be like just enough time to get into range on someone and have a Death Ward come out. So it's like pretty good pre-blink. It gives like a little bit of an advantage there, but I think the main, the main thing that really makes it worth it is um, just how good Witch Doctor is in like fighting a Tri-Lane. Uh, Cask is really good against multiple people, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a 600 attack range, decent attack damage, so he can zone decently for the Legion Commander. And he's also pretty tanky. Like Something that I feel like most people don't really think about in terms of picking their supports is like how tanky they are. There's a lot of just like, oh, in support, it's squishy. But mm-hmm. there's so many degrees of like variation. Like, uh, you like know, Bane? Yeah, like Bane, Bane like is Like Bane compared to CM. And he has it, and he has this like nuke that also heals him. And Witch Doctor is a pretty similar damage. case. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, so good. Yeah, he he heals for he heals himself for a shit ton. He starts with like six hundred health or something, but he's like, ah, oh, he's a fucking in support. He must yeah. be hella squishy. He's gonna die. Like, no, he's fucking Bane. He's got he like six hundred goddamn health. Hey, he it's is, crazy. Yeah, he is by a decent margin the highest uh, stats at level one. He is what it's twenty two, twenty two, twenty two, twenty two agi, twenty two int, twenty two strength. Um, at level one, and I mean, he, he's so good. I mean, like uh, Gorgon touched on it on Tuesday's show when they were talking about the pro meta, um, and he was saying how Secret loves drafting Bane when like other teams barely ever draft him. Like I think Bane has like a nine percent pick rate overall, but Secret picks him thirty percent of the time or forty percent or something like that. Because I mean, he's just a really strong hero, and he has a lot of synergy. But he'll be a hero for future weeks. Um, so. And in this Witch Doctor Legion lane, this is not so much, in my mind, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is not so much a lane where we're going to want to be like super aggressive and dominate the lane early. It's more of a lane of like, get good farm, trade farm until 6, and then like we start snowballing and getting duels and such. Um, uh, of course, this depends on the lane. You know, If they have a weak try lane or if they do a lane or something, then the dynamic changes for sure. But... Um, what do you think like the overall goal is going to be for us? So yeah, my, kind of my idea going into this was um, when people think about like, oh, what's a fun tri lane to run? Normally the idea stops at like, well, what can get a lot of kills before eight minutes? But um, in, in, in a lot of games, that's not really super relevant. Or maybe it does. Maybe you do get a bunch of kills off early. Maybe they do just keep walking into you. Um, and you collect, you know, like 20 kills because they don't know what other lane to turn to. Yeah. But sometimes you want a lane where... Maybe when, when you're dealing with dual offlane, potentially against a tri lane, like uh, last week, you know, we dealt with this PL um, something else. So we just kind of got countered. Was, we couldn't get any kills. Yeah. So, so you want you want a lane that's like, you know, it can it can contest a tri lane and have that kind of be enough. So the idea is you have a legion commander who she's like an okay offlaner, but she normally has a really really hard time. And mm-hmm. even though she always is just has a really fucking awful time in the offlane, she's still like kind of perfectly thought of as an offlaner. So I figure maybe if you put her in a position where she's like definitely going to have an okay time, she gets a lot better off. And then Witch Doctor gets levels because he's not just you know solo supporting and not really getting, or rather, he's not tri-lane supporting. He's not splitting, splitting the experience ridiculously. Yeah. So okay. yeah, just kind of put them both off in a better position than they normally would be. Yeah, and then like both get some semblance of farm, and they do fine. Uh, levels too, and then of course... Of course, I mean we're going to be a three random pub, so who knows what they're going to do? But theoretically, like this could synergize well with like another safe lane that's not super greedy, and then you'd all come together and do some push with like you know a, a mid that goes mech, then witch doctor, or whatever. Although that doesn't really work too well with Legion, but um, something to think about. What? So one of the big things I think about on Legion is she's one of those heroes that has a lot of different item builds. 
and yeah. skill builds, but mostly item builds. Um, so I, I know like a lot of it comes down to personal preference in my mind. Like some people, they go Shadowblade no matter what. And then other people like myself are like diehard Blink. Uh, I shouldn't say diehard because I differ depending on the game. But Yeah, uh, I, wouldn't, Blink, I wouldn't be diehard Blink either. I never die. Yeah, yeah well, um, Blink is definitely, I don't know. I think Blink is superior in my opinion. But other people prefer Shadowblade just because, you know, instant damage. And she has that awesome synergy between Shadowblade where her ult, if you cast the ult while Shadowbladed, it, it, there's no time between, like, the hit and the duel. The hit comes off when the duel comes off. So that's one of those things that gives the opponent less reaction time. But um, And then Blade Mail, I think, is core on her. Although that adds to, like, the difficulty. I shouldn't say difficulty. But it adds to the amount of buttons you have to press in a very short amount of time. Which yeah. sounds like a silly problem. You're like, oh, sh- just play better. But at the same time, like, it's all like, they all of it has animations, and like, you're trying to do it really quickly before like you blink. Kind of like uh, I used to when Tusk first came out. I was like, man, I'm gonna get a medallion on this guy, and it's gonna be great. And this was before with his old Walrus Punch, where you had to like activate it and then right click mm-hmm. someone. So I would like snowball in, cast shards while immediately getting like in the one second stun of snowball. Also get like fucking medallion on them, and there's like three other creeps inside the shard, and I need to like press R and then click on the right one and wait for my cast. Yeah, this is yeah. awful. So oh, much yeah. shit to do. Yeah, be- people always underestimate that because it, it sounds like theoretically, whenever you have combos like that, you're like, oh, well, I mean, all you have to do is just, like, play it a lot, and you just learn to click buttons faster, but, like, really, there's so, there's only so much you can do to, like, speed up your button presses, and sometimes when you're going too fast, they'll mess you up, so, like, um, to, of course, for me to, like, to, to bring up Invoker, as always, like, a big problem people have is there's only so, like, this is partially because Reborn is dumb, but, like, if you press your buttons too fast, it queues up the, not necessarily the wrong ability, but it queues up the ability that used to be in the first slot. Um, if it's in the second slot, but you press it too fast, uh, it'll, like, and you press the, like, so D and F are my 1 and 2. If, uh, if like, Cold Snap is in D, and I queue up something else, and Cold Snap is now in F, if I hit it too fast, Cold Snap, which is in F, will trigger when I hit D. So there are certain things that like you can't oh. you can't physically press buttons yeah. like faster than the game processes things. So the same thing with Legion, if you're trying to use press the attack on yourself and you're trying to use blade mail and then you're trying to blink or, or I suppose shadow blade, but if you shadow blade you're going to lose a lot of time on your buffs. Um I mean it's only so fast you can do those yeah. kind of things. So that's what I going to take into consideration. But uh so what what is your ideal item build? Um I first want to say, I think from now on, whenever you need to come up with uh, examples to try to illustrate something, you should just use Ursa and see if you can do it that way. Like, pressing buttons too fast on Ursa. I think that would be fun. Okay. I, I'm i at a loss. Is there a joke there, or is it actually a good example? No, it's not. I just want you to talk about Ursa from now on, because it seems counter to, like, every other hero you play. Yeah, well, Ursa. Ursa, ha- like, that hero. I don't know. Maybe it's because his name is too close to my own, but I'm just not a fan. I really, ugh, I don't know. Yeah, I can, I can see it. I Actually, I really, it, it's one of those weird things where it's not intentional that I don't like heroes that focus on getting Roche, but at the same time, I really don't like heroes that focus on getting Roche. Except for T.A. You play T.A., yeah, T.A., what yeah. the fuck? She like, is... Like, there's like four heroes <laughs> who get Roche and you like 25% of them. Like, get out of here. No, well, you know, all right, so the ones that come to mind, other than T.A., all right, so T.A., I'll, I'll yeah, give you yeah. that one, of course, I like T.A., but then there's Huskar, which I hate, there's Ursa, I, I don't know which I, I don't like. Huskar focuses on getting Roche, but he's Well, he does, like, I mean, you get your armlet at six minutes, and you go Roche. I, I guess, yeah. Yeah, um, and then Ursa, I really yeah, don't like. Yeah, Ursa. Lycan. Huskar, Lycan. Which I don't like. Um, who are the other early Roche heroes? I mean, I think that's in, about in the it. past, like, Juggernaut and Troll, kind of, but that yeah, was but that's, a patch where, like, every hero... I was gonna say, yeah, that doesn't count. <laughs> that was, like, anybody that is melee and can buy Quelling Blade. Yeah. That's Roche, but, um... But, yeah. So that's, like, 25%. Yeah, okay, so that's fair. I dislike the majority of heroes that get ro- that focus on Roche. To be fair, I do like all of the heroes except for TA. I mean, I like TA, I'm just fucking dog shit at her, but... Yeah, she takes some practice. She's a good time. I, uh... Anyway... Item builds for Legion Commander. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, back on topic. So 
I, I played her a lot when she like kind of first came out and people were trying to figure stuff out and then like amongst like the second wave of uh, a more developed Legion commander and then people trying to figure it out again. Um, I'm definitely I never don't go blink. Uh, sometimes blink shadow blade is decent. Um, I I, th- I think that unless you're at the kind of rating where stealth is really good and people don't really know how to react to it until it's too late, shadow blade is okay. But I think as you start getting up there, you should try to focus more on like getting good with blank dagger because it's just it's just that's the item. It's just mm-hmm. that's what it is. Um, I I think treads are treads are always the way to go on Legion. Not a big fan of phase. Um, if we weren't dual landing like this, I would definitely go. If you're off landing her, I would go soul ring. Soul ring with, synergizes with your W way too well. Once you get two points in W, you come out at a mana like. You're ahead on mana and health if you soul ring and then press W, so that's always something good. Um, Blade Mail seems to be a very common idea on Legion Commander. Um, she actually does need the int decently, so in addition to giving her some damage and you know the reflecting on mm-hmm. neutral people, it's good. Um, but actually, my favorite item by far, if you're doing well on Legion Commander, is Desolator. It's oh, okay. actually like just absurdly good. Um, and I've felt this way for a pretty long time. And if you look, I was kind of looking through all the top 100 people. It was like any time they were having a good, like a really, really stompy game, they would get an early Desolator. So I feel pretty vindicated in that regard. It seems pretty good. Uh, if you press, if you do press the attack on you and you have Desolator up, like, That's and it's a lot even of better damage. now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absurd. And even though it is just kind of like flat damage that scales with press the attack, it also does give you the minus armors, and that can scale with the bonus damage that you get later. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, really good, like you immediately kill people really early on, like, you know, when TA gets Deso, she does like crazy amounts of damage for the first, like, you know, up till 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty similar with Legion Commander, if you get it like, you know, pre-20, 25 minutes, like all of your hits are just going to like shred supports. Um, so it's yeah. definitely the way to go if you're looking to get kills. And she's a natural AC carrier, so I mean... Yeah. You can kind of double down on that minus energy, armor. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I basically agree. I um, I think one of the weird things is, and I, I've, I remember this really smart person that I can't remember the name of, that's like a top, you know, top 100, whatever, Legion Commander player made a Reddit post um, somewhere. It might have been True Dota 2, or it may have just been regular Dota 2. Um, and they put out, like, a basic guide. But they were saying this really interesting viewpoint that I had never thought of before, they say that every game, pretty much, they go blade mail, and because they go blade mail, they don't go uh, like basher into abyssal, which is a very common item build on um, on pretty much any strength core, but especially legion. And the idea behind it was every time you bash them, they are not doing damage to themselves by hitting you. Yeah, and it's it's really something I never thought of before, but this now comes to mind because even though you didn't list that in your item build. When our lane goes, um, and of course, I mean, Blade is going to come in later, so this is a little bit of a moot point, but I'm going to be bashing them with a cask, most likely. So you're going to have less opportunities to be hitting with, pre- uh, with uh, I always, f- f- uh, Moment of Courage. So I think that's a little interesting mechanic that we might have to work around a little. Yeah, well, so the, the thing with cast that's actually, the, uh, that I think is really good is that um, it, it, it kind of... It's not so like it's it's not like where you're, uh, yeah, you know, shadow shaman or something. You're not gonna like shackle them for four seconds and then I'll duel them while they're not doing anything. It's like you'll throw the cask and it lasts like kind of just long enough for me to get into range. And then once I duel the cask, you know, if it does hit them again, you know, okay, yeah, it's like a second. Stop for a little bit. They'll take you know another however much damage. I think it's like I don't know. Gets up to. The, it gets up to, to like a hundred, I think. It's it's pretty decent. I know it starts pretty high as well. We'll, we'll figure that one out later. Yeah, but well. uh, you know, it's 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 a short enough stun. Like the the real meat of it is that it gets me in range. You know. Yeah, and uh, the damage. And once I have you know. blink, you know, you don't, you don't need to drop it once we're already dueling. Yeah, very true. And I think the damage from cask may more or less equal out the damage that the target would have received from like a blade mill hit or something. So I guess we don't have to worry about it too much. And if and the game is going well enough, uh, because you're going to be helping me out there, maybe I won't get blade mail. It'll kind of depend what we're doing. If if all you're doing is dueling crystal maiden, having a blade mail isn't the most important thing. Yeah. But if your intent is to, like duel an anti mage, you know, so we'll see what we're going up against, and then we can try to kind of try to plan accordingly. Yeah, I like the. I'm idea. not too married to blade mail, but I definitely do agree that it's a good item if you're going like a kind of more uh, utility legion commander who has less emphasis put into her farming. Yeah, I think that's definitely a way we see it a lot in higher level play. Is people pick the 
Uh, Legion Commander almost has like a four second lockdown as opposed to like a I'm going to get a bunch of dual damage and do damage. It's more of like, yeah. oh, well, they picked Batrider and I don't want the Batrider to carry around my carry away my carry. So whenever the Batrider initiates, I'm going to blink on the Batrider and duel him. Stuff like that. Yeah. Like, It's just a very solid, strong initiation. And uh, if you're using it on something like a Batrider, even if you lose the duel, who cares? Like, It's a Batrider with plus 16 damage. That's not the end of the world. Um, or like a hero like, I don't know, any big team fighter comes to mind. Like, you really want to lock him down. What better way than to, to use a BKB piercing uh, four second disable with, with damage being done? So uh, it's definitely interesting. And um, I look forward to how this lane goes. I'm trying to think if there's anything we really don't want to lane against. Do you have any thoughts on that? Nothing really comes to my mind. Um... No, no, nothing really. I wanted to say actually another one of the good synergies between Witch Doctor and Legion Commander is like we do actually we we do really well at the solo pickoff with you know the fucking duel and then death word and blah 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 blah. We kill someone mm-hmm. great, um, but also we're also really good against um, kind of like a bigger team fight and skirmishes that kind of thing. Uh-huh. Uh, overwhelming odds, you know, does well against you know if I hit three people in it, that's an absurd amount of damage. And if you task when there's three people around, so like we we can't do the pickoff really well, and we can't do the skirmish. So like kind of no matter what lane combination we're up against, um, we'll do pretty well. I certainly hope so. I think uh, hopefully this won't be one of those times where we're like, oh, it'll be fine, everything. Like there's nothing that could beat this lane, and then right when you get into the game, they pick something, and you're like, oh, darn. Well, we'll see. I almost um, think the worst situation would be we're first forced to safe lane, which is normally kind of counter to how I play. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's rare that that kind of statement uh, like, is said. Drat, but we have free farm. Very it's rarely. I, it's always alarming um, when my team like. So recently, I've been playing Kunkka support, and I just ask. I'm just like I first pick it all the time. And I'm just like, all right, I'm supporting, and and on multiple occasions, people just pick all the supports, and they're like, well, no, you're gonna mid. Like well, I don't, I don't want to mid. Like I asked to do the thing nobody ever wants to do, and yeah. suddenly I don't. But then, of course, the opposite is more often true, where it's like, oh well, I really want to play practice my shadow fiend, and then you get ten games in a row where you have people that say me mid, and then if you try to force them out, they feed. Literally, so. what happened? Literally, my last like my last shadow fiend game, because like on my team I have to play mid now, so I'm like really trying to get good at uh, you know get better anyways at mid. Mm-hmm. Pick shadow fiend. Someone and I first pick it. Someone picks a Zeus, and there's an off lane hus- or There's an off lane Tusk, and someone wants to do off lane with the Tusk. The Tusk rages, and then we're try laning mid. It's like okay, mm-hmm. I just have. Hmm. That anyway. sounds like Dota to me. That's yep. for sure. Standard. All right. Well, uh, I look forward to playing this combo. Hopefully, it goes better than last week. Which anybody that's listened to that episode knows that was a travesty. So um, I think think luck should be in our favor. The Dota gods are smiling upon us. They know these guys deserve a win. And uh, hopefully all the good players will be playing Fallout so you and me can just walk in there and be like, all right, we're good, we're golden. Alternatively, I suppose maybe only the hardcore players are going to be on, so games are going to be harder, but we'll, that remains to be seen. All right, so I look forward to the game, and of course you guys can catch the game on .ptv1, our YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Theorycrafting Thursday. We have just finished our game um, after the hiatus. And um, in the like whatever 30 seconds of music that you had in between, that's basically equivalent to how long our game lasted. And um, yeah, I mean we did pretty well. And uh, our teammates did really well. And uh, it was a game, we did attend it. And it is up on the YouTube channel. What do you think, Proud? How'd it go for you? Um... I'd say it went, it went pretty good. Uh, I was kind of a little bit disappointed with my own uh, my own kind of like last hitting and lane control. I feel like it could have been way better if I was uh, you know not playing my first game for a few days. Mm-hmm. Um, but beyond beyond that, I feel like the lane itself was the lane itself was good. Um, we were kind of talking earlier about how there's not really anything we're super afraid of. Um, but then we went against the dazzle, and then we remembered that that's actually what we don't yep. want to be against. Um, just kind of the way the the way the 
the duo works is it's it's like pretty tanky. We have some sustain. We both have really good right clicks. Like Legion starts with sixty four damage now, so we can just kind of bully the lane super hard. I should have got like an Orb of Venom or something. That would have been great. Oh yeah, uh, that made sense. But if you're fighting try v try or you know just like laning dual lane versus dual lane even, and you're manning up on a PA and their creep wave comes and dazzle heals, then yeah, the momentum very quickly shifts out of your favor. Um, so that was a little rough. I died once to that. But even then being down to death, we, we could still bully the lane super well. Um, anytime they didn't have two supports in lane and just had the one, we would like bully PA out and she would have to like be last hitting with daggers and just yeah. feed us wand charges. And even then sometimes she didn't get it because we could double deny with like, I don't know, 120 damage between the two of us. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, it was, it was interesting. I definitely, I definitely like, I, I would play that, I think. Yeah, I, I actually really liked it. I mean... Like we said, Dazzle really messed up our lane, but I think we kind of came to the agreement um, that Dazzle ruins most of these combos. Like, I mean, Dazzle, you said it yourself in the in when we were in the game. It's basically like, oh, you don't want to die? Okay, Dazzle. Like, Dazzle does everything for Like, he messes up every uh, all these combos. So, <laughs> Dazzle, I feel like we should just have, like, a disclaimer at the beginning of every Theory Crafting Thursday episode, like, warning. Whatever combo we don't want, what whatever combo we draft, is gonna lose to Dazzle, and that's it, or at least not flourish against the Dazzle. And I think we I saw. I feel like I feel like Dazzle is really good against those lanes where like you you're going to get a kill in your lane, and like mm-hmm. our lane kind of circumvents that, and we're like, okay, like it doesn't really matter because we're not t- caring too much about whether or not we get kills. We just want to like be stable and like get our heroes off into a good place. But then like Dazzle's heal is counter to like. Mm-hmm to that so like we kind of avoided the one thing that dazzle like kind of ruins every you know like oh just go for a kill fun dual lane with but we ran into the other problems so it seemed like we were out in the clear but then heal is actually pretty good turns out yeah and it's it's weird i mean you touched on i mean dazzle not only is it hard to kill people against him obviously because of shallow grave unless you're axe but the thing is he has so much sustain so like a lane like ours so for instance you were harassing with um overwhelming odds and we actually did get a kill on PA, but um, Dazzle, I mean, A, he has sustain, and then B, like, you're kind of lulled into a sense of, like, let's go kill that guy. Like, oh, the PA was low. So we're like, oh, okay, let's go kill the PA. And then, of course, we went on the PA, and then he heal-bombed us because, of, of course, all the creeps aggro to you when you A-click the hero. And then, like, I mean, Dazzle's just really good in that respect. Like, he lulls you into the sense, like, all right, let's go. And then suddenly the guy's alive for an extra six seconds, and he's being healed, and you're taking tons of physical damage, and it's just miserable. Yeah. So, yep. Um, but, again, I think, like, overall it went well. Again, like, our game was very short. Like, if you don't normally watch the VODs for for uh, for this, like, this one is very little time commitment. And um, we had some really impressive Ember Spirit play that helped us out. And uh, we did have a Huskar which actually just kept dying to a pudge. But um, it definitely worked out in the long run. Team comp-wise, I think we picked well around it. Like, they picked a solid dual lane top. It was what? It was Huskar, Marana, and the Marana roamed and hit, like, every single arrow. The Marana was actually, like... I, I very rarely am proud to have a Marana on my team, but that guy was awesome. That guy hit, like... He hit every arrow I saw that flew. So maybe he missed like one that I didn't see, but it was it was impressive. And again, yeah. I say that as someone who hates Marana. I think she's a garbage hero. So um, yeah, it was it was just a really good game altogether for our team, and then the other team not so much. Um, I definitely think this lane has potential, though. Like you said, like we've done some lanes in the past that like it works, but it's like kind of hit or miss. But I think this is the kind of lane where even if it doesn't go super well, like our lane went fine. Right, like you said, you had around forty CS at ten minutes, which for an off lane is not bad. Granted, of course, like you want to have fifty, whatever, but um, it has a lot of options. Whereas it's not like an all in lane, so both of us had enough farm and enough levels that, like, for instance, I could TP to mid and take a team fight and leave you alone, and it'd be fine. And you could, I mean, for example, like you could be alone while I was somewhere else. It we we're not so heavily reliant on each other that it yeah. cripples the lane potentially. So Yeah, like if if I had you rotate out, you know, it's not like we're dual off laning like, I don't know, fucking uh Yeah, I'm trying to think of a combo that's really super 
really, like something like Coddle PL, which of course Coddle PL is more like uh, that's also kind of a bad example, but um, there's, there's, I'm sure there's some example. Like like we ran Pudge Omni the other week, like a, like a while ago, okay. and Pudge Omni it went really well actually. I shouldn't say really well; it was a really good game, um, but it went pretty well. And um, the thing is, like Pudge Omni, when you don't have one of the two parts there, like if Pudge rotates. Omni yeah. is just like you, yeah, like who cares? It's just an Omni. So off lane, Omni is not going to get a lot out of the lane. Yeah, the so second is you know whole threat walks away. Exactly. So that's like the opposite example. Whereas us, you know, you could potentially leave me alone, and unless they go on me with all three of them, um, I was going to be pretty fine, and I could leave you alone. And unless again, unless all three of them go on you, which did happen, I think once, maybe twice. Yeah, it was all relative. three of them and a Pudge who hooked me into position for them to kill yeah. me. And Windrunner was coming to you. And a Windrunner. You, <laughs> but yeah, she didn't it get was, there because uh, you died too quick. There was a power shot, I think, from her. But yeah, oh. ba- basically, you know, we both of us can survive pretty well. You can cask if like, three supports get on you. Mm-hmm. Uh, assuming a team runs three supports anyways. And I can, you know, fucking press the attack, bunch of crazy shit, heal myself up, move speed from overwhel- or overwhelming. There's is, is a lot of options we have. So yeah, we, we do work independently. Remember at one point I was like, "Hey, can you leave lane for a second? And that was actually not right because you were really close to six. But that is the thing that could possibly happen. Mm-hmm. I also like that uh, our item builds were super variable. Um, I know I said as soon as uh, the game was kind of going, how it was going, I was like, "Okay, like I'm probably gonna go blink and then silver edge." Yeah. Um, and I know more people are like, "Ah, oh, you get shadow blade or you get blink," but there's always the option to go both. Um, and we were against a PA, so the fact that I, you know, could be an easy silver edge carrier. Uh, it's really good for a counter to PA. Yeah, I uh, I definitely think. I mean, PA obviously like Silver Edge is great against her, unless I think Legion is a good MKB carrier. But th- that said, like the difference between MKB and Silver Edge, which obviously like I mean th- this is an obvious thing, but it may not be something you think of on the fly. But if you have an MKB against PA, that's helping you singularly, but it's not helping the team. So the example we talked about in game was that PA's evasion works against Witch Doctor Ward, but it does not work against bounces with Aghanim. So if Witch Doctor Ward is targeting like the Pudge on the enemy team, the bounces have a hundred percent hit rate against PA. But if the Ward is without Ags or if it's with Ags and it's targeted to the PA, the PA gets blur chance to dodge the yeah. damage. Um, so. In that re- in that regard, Silver Edge would work really well with my ult because you'd walk in, you'd Silver Edge her, and then she can't dodge any of my ult. Whereas yeah. normally she'd be dodging whatever it is, thirty percent. And then the the other aspect of that is uh, Silver Edge is like as nice as a counter to like you know PA and, and Spectre and all those, mm-hmm. but they can also BKB it off and Manta it off. And yeah. uh, PA PA Manta, I mean, I could talk about PA for a while. She's I think my second most played hero still. But PA Manta is like actually pretty legit. I'm not sure how it works with the current item builds, but it's a really really strong item, especially if they have a uh, Silver Edge and BKB is always there. But what's nice about Legion? is if you Silver Edge and then immediately duel them and they don't pop BKB, like you, you're stuck with a PA with no crit, still has good attack speed for your Moment of Courages, mm-hmm. and no dodge. So it really just, like, like that's, a, that's a pretty good way to deal with a PA is if you can get a Legion Commander with Blink Silver Edge up. That's, like, that's a fucking, that's a dud hero right there. Yeah, it's one of those weird matchups where, like, you think in the early game, it's like, all right, well, PA, PA is advantage because when you duel, a good number of your hits are going to miss her. But then... Later on, it's uh, that difference is that uh, well, that paradigm kind of ebb and flow with it. Yeah, yeah, the ebb and yeah, flow. Yeah, it, it 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 flips around a lot based yeah. upon your items. Yeah, so it's 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 cool. I mean, if and of course, if PA like gets her BKB off beforehand, and then you so for it, and uh, there's there's a lot of variations you can go into it. But yeah. and, it definitely yeah. is one of the few times where that can like really kind of do a hard shift in Legion's favor. Yep. Yeah. And another thing I think of is like Blade Mail would have been really good against PA. Because, I mean, if she crits you, she's critting herself also. So I think maybe... I'm trying to think like where you'd work that into your build, or if you just skip it entirely. The thing so I would say with PA is so that she, she only really does good damage if she Ws on you. So like mm-hmm. if she's doing her shit attacks... I mean, she builds a Mask of Madness, so if I catch her with a Mask, I mean, you know, that'd be definitely yeah, she good. Yeah, no matter what. Um, but uh, PA, who doesn't build Mask that quickly, um, although I actually do think that's the build right now. So yeah, Blade, Blade, Blade Mail, pretty good uh, against PA. Uh, all these guys, really, except for maybe not Windrunner. Um, yeah, but yeah, well, definitely definitely do agree. Windranger is actually... 
I've played against Wind as Legion multiple times now, and I still t- cannot decide if it's like a good matchup or a bad matchup because it's one of those things like if you catch the Wind Ranger, you kill her because she can't win run and you and she does not naturally build health items so you or or armor items for that matter so you just punch her to death with with dual and she can't win run and then but on the other hand if she gets win run you're just worthless or like if she win yeah. runs in that split second because there's no cast animation to win run so if she win runs in that split second that you're trying to duel her. She's in the clear. So it's one of those really weird matchups. Um, she's also quite good against Ember Spirit, who was our MVP by far, but um, clearly that, that did not work out for her. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, overall, I think I'm pretty happy with it. Um, you touched on PA, and not to get off on a complete tangent, but PA is a hero that I also really like, and I know she's just a popular hero in general. In general. So... She, I think, has one of like the most varied builds of any carry. I'd say like she's, if not, she's probably not the most diversified carry, but she's up there. Like you see people go mask of madness builds. Like I do Vlad's builds a lot. I do Helm of the Dominator builds a lot. And then you know some people, you know, she builds basically every item a carry can build. I feel like I feel like so, she has she def- she definitely does have like three builds, and it's it's really I think just two point five, and then small variations off of all those. Okay. Um, there's definitely there's definitely the phase uh, Vlad's Deso kind of business um, that I have opinions about, and then there's the uh, the kind of standard like the red items. This mm-hmm. is where PA builds all the red items in the game. You get yeah. some either Helm of the Dominator or Mask of Madness, which is the variation of those, and then you get it, it's more like red and yellow. And you get Basher, and then Abyssal, and BKB, and fucking Satanic, and an Aegis, which is also red. Mm-hmm, of um, course. Yeah. So, and then treads, which you have on red as well. Um, so there's like that, and then you can put a battle fury in there, which is kind of like that red and yellow, brown, those kind of yeah. colors. So that's I just kind of view it as the red build. Yeah, you got to fit uh, the motif. Yeah, and um, and then there's also like that build only you try to fit uh, manta in there, which was really popular around I think the summit two uh, eternal envy, just like every fucking game. And like it's really good. Like manta's so fucking good on PA. Like I can't believe how good that item is. It's just really hard to fit in. Yeah, uh, I I tend to have that problem on PA, but um, I mean the the big thing uh, reason I bring this up is Mask of Madness. I see this also in like especially Eternal Envy does it. He's the one big PA player I think of, yeah. um, because she's not a very popular hero in pros, um, right now, or at least maybe I'm watching the wrong games. But um, no, what's like the reason behind Man- uh, Mask of Madness? Because I feel like do you get it after BKB or do you get it before? BKB, so, but you don't use it in fights until you have BKB? Because I feel like she'd just get blown up and she's such like a hero. Before player. what PA used to do was she would go home with the Dominator, right? Like every game. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was because PA just unequivocally, you need lifesteal on PA. If you get Battle Fury, you don't have to get lifesteal because you have some health regen that way you can jungle. Yeah. Um, but there's no way PA is going to do anything without lifesteal. You just have to get it. Um, so you're like, okay, I need lifesteal. What do I get? Home with the Dominator. Um, but it's really hard to kill Ancients now, so there's not that really like that great a reason to get it on her. Mm-hmm. Um, getting the plus damage on her is, is really good because she has such nice attack speed from her W, mm-hmm. um, and she builds treads as well. And like, holy shit, just build build treads on PA. That's a whole fucking discussion. But like, people think you get attack speed from your W, so where do you need attack speed from anywhere else? Like, yeah. just get treads. Um, the attack speed is good on PA, so you get treads on her, um, and then you get some damage from the Dominator, and everything's good. But it's really hard to fit Manta or uh, or SNY if you're into that uh, on PA now. So like you do, you definitely do need some form of it uh, of move speed. And then you throw in the fact that like early game, so she she can't. You don't get the benefit of Ancients from Helm of the Dom. You don't need the HP regen that much. The armor is nice, but you have evasion. So it's really just like really all you're getting out out of that point is like the 20 damage. And then you just ask yourself, is Mask of Madness active worth more than 20 damage? And I feel like the answer to that is definitely yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen so many times like you just activate Mask of Madness and Blink Strike on someone, and they'll die before they can react. Like you get you 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 need to fish for a crit, and the way that you get that to happen is you have enough attack speed that like you know uh, you on on average you know the more attacks you throw out, the more like the more your your crit is going to come out. So it's not really a question, like, you don't need a big crit, you just need one. Mm -hmm. So you get as many attacks, and you get ten attacks in, like, two seconds, and then someone just pops, and then you get the fuck out. 
So hmm. PA, you know, you weave in and out a lot. You get Mask of Madness. It gives you some move speed. So you just pop it real quick. You go in. It also, I mean, it's a, it's a farm. It's a farming item. Uh, you pop it and you run through camps really quickly. Yeah. Um, but then also, if you need to, yeah. And you can, you know, before MKBs come out, if you BKB Mask of Madness, you're not going to die. Like you're oh, just yeah. going to kill everything. Huh, that's good. I'll have to try that sometime. Because, again, like, I have seen it, but I've always thought, like, yeah, that's, like, a weird build. I don't know if I could pull it off. But me, I'll have to try it next time. Because I, I have picked up uh, PA and played her quite a bit recently. Although, I don't know how much Dota I'm going to be playing, considering Fallout is going to be... I've seen Fallout papers. My life is fairly consumed. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, we kind of did go off on a tangent there. But I think, like, closing notes on Witch Doctor, uh, Legion Commander... I like it. I think it's good. I think its biggest strength is that it has a lot of room for variation. And, um, I mean, it's not all in. We, I mean, we, we touched on this a lot, of course, but it's very, like, well-rounded, I suppose, would be the term, the hyphenated term, I guess, I would use to describe it. It's a, it's a safe, non-intrusive way to play two overall strong, well-rounded heroes. All right. No one's going to get mad that you're playing dual offlane. You're going to give them safe lane. They're going to be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be very happy. They make, oh boy, I don't have to even have to fight anybody for safe lane. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a very uh, political way to describe it. A safe, non-intrusive manner of laning two good heroes. That's, uh, yeah. I feel like... Who, who in Legion you know, doesn't have a lot of good ways to get lane. So if you want to play Legion, which turns out like almost everyone does... And they just don't know what the fuck to do, so they end up in the jungle. Just play it like this. You'll be great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's better than the jungle. Let's put it that way. Um, I think there are a lot of heroes like that. Uh, not, not to go off again on another complete tangent, but I think there are quite a few heroes like that. And of course, we use Necrophos as the prime example earlier. But uh, there are a lot of heroes like that that like is a strong hero, but you just don't know what to do with them. Like they don't yeah. match up well against mids, um, and they don't match up like they don't farm well so you're just kind of like uh oh, what do i do uh, i don't know um it's either slasher's way roaming offlane yeah. or just like try to yeah. figure something out like dual offlane yeah i mean when in doubt look up slasher's way and pray he made a guide for your hero yeah. so uh, yeah i mean i think that's enough to close it out um i mean i'm i'm all witch doctored out i think that even though that game was only like 20 minutes it was a good time and uh yeah. he's Actually, just a fun here to play i do want to play that lane again sometime Oh yeah, I'm down. I think that's legit. I'm down if we want to farm some MMR. I'm sure, yeah. um, and definitely, I think that's a consistently too. Like, I think there's not too much that like. Again, we like not to completely reiterate, but there's nothing I think that like would really wreck us. So I think that's a good way, like you said, like to get two good heroes off to a good start. And unless like you just like get wrecked, like I mean, then that's like a personal problem. But uh, I think this definitely when we bring it down, it's a theory crafting win. And an execution win, um, so yeah. I mean, I mean that, that, that's all I've got to say about it. So for our plugs, we have defenseofthepatients dot com, where you can find the uh, find the podcast. You can also get it on all your apps, iTunes primarily. Leave us a review; we'd be more than happy to have it. Um, you can find us on Twitter. I am at Ursinity, U R S I N I T Y, and proud. You are at proud Dota, right? No proud I- Dota. Yeah, no, no hyphens. Not even a space because that's impossible. And two Ds, because um, you know some people they try to be clever. They're like, oh man, I'll just you know make it proud of a, but that always seems weird to me. Yeah, that's awful. no offense anybody that has done that in that's listening to this. Um, you can also I would throw a little bit of offense, but yeah. Oh, well, you know maybe you can also find the vod from tonight's episode, no matter how short it is, at our YouTube channel .ptv1. You can also find tons of other content there. Um, we have my replay review series. We have tons of gameplay, various things between Game Club and Dota stuff and everything else. It's it's truly a wonderland of content. Um, what else do we have? We have other things. You can find uh, the show on Twitter at .p underscore show. Most of the other hosts are at .p underscore their name. Um, that's about it for me, I think, unless we're forgetting a plug, which in which case, I'm sorry, Easy Marquisi my dear overlord, but uh, I'll have to plug it next week. So, thanks for listening, and remember, this was our theory, but it's probably your fault. Probably. Probably.